Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here today in Dubai to visit the most extraordinary place. I'm here at the Space Dubai who have kindly welcomed me along to bring you for a visit of this epic location with the most amazing displays and a truly remarkable car collection. We're talking Devos, Elvas, Laferrari Aperta, Monza, you name it, all truly special cars, limited editions, set in the most amazing surroundings. I'm of course here with the AMG GT Black Series during my tour to the Middle East thanks to my friends at Quant Fury but today is about the space and mark my words this is going to be special let's head inside If I can say so myself, the solar beam paintwork on my car is looking spectacular in the sunshine here in the UAE, but this is a venue that I've been looking forward to visiting here at the space. Very kind of the team to pop up the welcome to the space Shmi 150 message on the display outside, but let's head on in to showcase this fantastic location, a private venue hosting at the moment the most incredible of car collections, a breathtaking display, plus everything that surrounds them. So welcome to the space, the first room here with the Rolls Royces, some very limited editions, the Mansouri Wraith Palm Edition, the last of the last, the final drophead coupe. We've also got a Phantom 8, Phantom 7, all special editions, plus this tremendous display behind that I've seen showcasing a demonstration of what they can do with that as well. But feast your eyes, this way here at the space how incredible is this impressive display the cars the environment the venue the hanging car up top the screens around the walls everything that we can look through in detail we have cars like the two devos the Huayra roadster the monza center stage the elvers the p1s the laferraris 918s plus some new and exciting things that we're going to explore very shortly in detail but let's start through this way to touch on the Rolls Royces, the replica, Apollo sitting here, the displays of guitars up on the walls as well. Have a look around there. And then center stage at the moment is the Mansouri Rolls Royce Wraith Palm Edition, specially finished in the satin white with the gold accents. And if you look at the interior, all of the gold details as well, from the handles to the mirror switches, to your seat controls, all of the accents and touches, the door sills, a one-off, the Palm Edition 999. If we come through, as I mentioned, this was the very final ever drophead coupe, the last of the last in the dual tone white and blue. And if you have a look at the interior, it is stunning in that dual tone leather we have the plaque here the final phantom 7 drophead coupe last of last special commission the last one that they built of the entire production run before it went off the line next to that we have the phantom 8 a tempest collection car one of only 20 in the blue but come and have a look at the interior of this as well and in particular the lighting elements of the door cards as you can see the way that illuminated but also the headliner the starlight headliner each car is actually different. So you can see the Phantom Tempest collection, one of 20, very, very stunning with the different blues going on inside that. Alongside it, we have the Phantom 7, the previous generation. We have the last of the last Phantom Coupe as well. This is the Kryptos edition of the Rolls-Royce Wraith, one of only 50 that they made with those turquoise accents, including the hand-painted coach line against the gray paint, the Cullinan being the daily driver, but in a stunning blue paintwork. Of course, I'm a big fan of that. But let's come through then to explore this room in detail, to feast our eyes over the most insane place that I have seen recently. There is a lot to take in here a very very special display from the g-wagons to the limited edition rare supercars to the hypercars that adorn the end area up towards the offices sitting above the simulators the bar area and all of the setup there we've got some more hypercars and some of the latest too of course close to my heart and some race cars as well plus the mad bicycle but let's Take a look through these, starting with the Ferrari 488 Challenge Evo race car, the car that takes part in their one make series that they run around the world. Next to that, the Porsche GT2 RS Club Sport, limited to 200 cars based on the road going GT2 RS. It came after the very limited 935, but effectively unrestricted. So for private customer track days, 
to fully unleash. We then have the Hurricane STO, which of course I now have one of back at home in my garage as well. This car finished in the new green paintwork with the orange accents, but also wearing the full at personum livery with the black bonnet over the roof and the painted stripes as well. The most hardcore track version of Lamborghini's baby supercar, you could say, although this is certainly no baby. 640 horsepower from the 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. Next to that, the Mansori Stallone, based on the Ferrari 812 Superfast. As you can see with extensive upgrades, for example, the full carbon fiber bonnet and splitter, more power, a new bumper, a new shape, new nose, new carbon louvres, the Stallone by Mansori badging, a massive wing sitting on the back and these mirrors help to give an even better view of everything that we're looking at around here. And in fact, look at the wing club that we've got going on along this wall. Next, we have the AMG GT Black Series, of course, fairly familiar with this. This is Magma Beam, the original launch color for the car, the Halo flagship color, you could say. And boy, does it stand out. 730 horsepower from the 4.0-litre bi-turbo V8. Another car with a 4.0-litre twin-turbocharged V8, the McLaren Senna, one of 500, in this case, the satin gray paintwork with the orange accents and details. Another car close to home, of course, with the Senna in my garage, one of 500 in total, 800 horsepower, mad machine. Next to that, we have the Holy Trinity, the Porsche 918 Spider, the Ferrari LaFerrari, in this case, the Aperta, the McLaren P1, in this case, the Carbon Series. The 918 being Porsche's first full production hybrid hypercar, mixing the V8 with the electric motors for just shy of 900 horsepower, but setting the Nürburgring lap record time with it back then at six minutes and 57 seconds. This is the regular 918, as opposed to the Visac, the even more hardcore version that was offered as well. We then have, as I said, the Aperta, of the LaFerrari, one of my favorite cars I have ever driven on a glorious evening in Sardinia. Just over 200 in total that they made, having used some of the cars as media and marketing cars around the world to celebrate Ferrari's 70th anniversary, but 963 horsepower, 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V12, combined with electric motors, pure driving paradise. Now the cool thing about this P1 and the fact that it's a carbon series is that they only made five of them. There's one here, there's another there, two of the five P1 carbon series in the world, distinct for its full carbon fiber bodywork with the red pinstripe details and accents that you can see around the lower sections of the car, even on the wing hydraulics, some of the leather and the seat belts on the inside, the piece over the top of the dashboard console, even the red painting that you have around the inside of the wheels. But there were 375 P1s. Some of them have gone back for carbon fiber upgrades as well since, and this car is sitting actually down in race mode at the moment. But again, just over 900 horsepower from the 3.8 liter twin turbo V8, along with the hybrid system. And that was McLaren's first Ultimate Series car. This is the latest, the McLaren Elva, the completely open driving experience, only 149 of them to be made in total. In McLaren's identity color, the bright orange paintwork, super light, super powerful, over 800 horsepower with this open experience. And not only that, it also has this very clever technology to raise a component on the front bonnet to effectively reduce the buffeting that you experience inside by virtually pushing the air over the top. And as you can see, the wing of this just slightly lifted as well but that would be quite the driving experience i would reckon it has to be said just look at this car something completely alien window shieldless although you could opt to have your car with the window shield should you prefer but now we move on to the bugatti devos a pair of bugatti devos there are only 40 in the world only four or five of those are here in the uae and we're looking at them the hardcore bugatti model a complete expression of bespoke design, special details, and look at the dark blue carbon that goes against the strong blue paintwork that you have. This higher spoiler, still active, lifts up and moves around. These very impressive tail lights that you have. Look at the diffuser work, the central exhaust tailpipe. One and a half thousand horsepower coming from that quad turbo eight liter W16. And looking truly really special in the process as well. It's not every day you see one Bugatti Devo, and here we actually have two, but first let's talk about the Pagani Huayra Roadster as well. One of a hundred Huayra Roadsters in total, six liter twin turbo V12, but a work of art as always, especially with the blue carbon bodywork and the lighter interior with the dual tone. This is 
a very, very nice specification. The gold dials to finish it off and match with the gold wheels on the exterior. All of the intricate details that you notice on cars from Pagani, the Tricolore colours, the Italian flag, the active flaps that you have at the front and those gold pinstriping details that run from the nose cone as well. A very, very good looking car. The second of the two Devos, in this case, the satin white contrasting with that turquoise paintwork that you have against it found all around as well those three cars alone are quite the sight and then we move to the second elva from the collection i would love to get behind the wheel and experience an elva at some point soon the p1 carbon series continuing is seeing one and this is not actually in race mode it's the normal aero mode so the wing sitting in its middle position as opposed to all the way raised when the suspension is lowered we have the la ferrari one of 499 originally 500 in total in the end ferrari's entry to that holy trinity another car that matches from my garage the solar beam sls black series the original launch color in fact of the sls black 6.2 liter naturally aspirated v8 front mid mounted gullwing doors that open up the yellow interior against the yellow paint i have in fact seen this very car in the past amazing to be reunited with it but i didn't do solar beam on my sls i chose to go for mystic blue because i tend to avoid launch colors for cars but wanted to have it on the gt black hence why it was resprayed to be in exactly this shade we have the sf90 stradale soon to arrive in my garage in a couple of months as well in fact in rosso corsa this is the car in a very similar actually spec to mine in the sense of of not being the Assetto Fiorano, the same wheel option and more of a, I guess, road going specification. We move to the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster, the 63, one of only 63, in addition to the 900 SVJs and then the Roadsters that they made, the 800 Roadsters that followed, they also made 63 for the most VIP of customers and clients. This is actually another car I'm a very big fan of. I've never driven one. But every time I see them, I do reference this. The Ferrari 599 SA Aperta. Effectively, with the 661 horsepower naturally aspirated V12 from the 599 GTO, the bodywork of the regular GTB, but crucially, with no roof. They made it as this front mid-engined open top two-seat Grand Tourer. There is a removable fabric panel, and then they also made a carbon roof panel as well originally 80 cars a few more than that did make it down the production line in the end about 130 but every time i see them i look at that with well fond memories of when it arrived it really has been one of my favorites next to it is the hurricane evo gt celebration one of only 36 that they made you normally see these in the green with the orange contrast as opposed to the blue with the yellow but this was effectively launched to celebrate various results and successes for Lamborghini Squadra Corsa race team. In fact, we have the specifics just here of the Daytona and the Sebring race wins but based on the Hurricane Evo with that special livery. And another car with a special livery is the 70th anniversary Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. The fun of this was in their 70th anniversary, having been founded back in 1947, in 2017, they made 70 each of five different models in the various liveries which link back to historical cars, race cars or wins. So here obviously we have the pearl white paint with the blue and red accents the painted Scuderia shields and that red heritage style interior. Have a look at the seats here with the squared quilting you can see in the center of those. Next to it, the Pista Spider. Spider, I believe perhaps slightly more limited than the Pista Coupe. Of course, the 3.9 liter twin turbo V8, lots of power. In fact, a car that is surprisingly quick, I can tell you from experience driving it. We've got the three G-Wagons here as well. This is actually a Hoffler G63. Hoffler do some tuning works up to 800 horsepower. I think it's the HG800. We've got carbon fiber components and we've got the completely reworked interior in the orange here to contrast against the black interior. It's a very bright interior, but I do actually quite like the look of that. We've got the Brabus 800 XLP Adventure. Now these are very rare. They only made eight of them in total, taking a new G63, extending it, lifting it, portal axles, 800 horsepower from it, completely retrimmed by the magicians at Brabus, and critically adding the pickup bed in the back which can of course be used for various different things. But the 800 XLP Adventure first edition, which I did drive at one point, awesome fun out in that. And we also have the Mansori Gronos. The Gronos is Mansori's full tuning package that they offer 
for the G63. So as you can see, it's wider than standard. Of course, more power, larger wheels, lots of carbon fiber. In traditional Mansori style, we have the unique weaves, this new diamond style weave there on the spare wheel cover, for example, and then around towards the bonnet. That carries through also even the trimmings and extra details. So I think you get a bit of a point for what this is like. We also have one of my favorite cars here in the center, the Ferrari Monza SP2, the heritage style livery, the first of the Icona series models. We recently saw the launch of the Daytona SP3, but this being more about emotion than let's say performance, not that it doesn't perform with over 800 horsepower thanks to the V12, but believe me, when you drive it with that open feeling with this long wheelbase, you feel like you have complete control over it. And I think it just looks stunning. Of course, two of the three, of the limited edition Barchetta cars that arrived to market in recent years. But that's not all. Up above us is a floating race car, single seat car, that literally can be lowered down. In fact, I had a demonstration of this before. This can all come down towards the ground, which is amazing to see as well. If we come on through, of course, the office spaces are upstairs over here. We've got the simulators, the full motion simulators, where they have cars that used to drive at the Dubai Autodrome, now fully set up for the purpose. Imagine being able to test out your skills here, sat in the car itself. Have a look at this. Of course, all of the equipment, the gears, the steering wheel, everything fully set up. Yes, very, very special, but also about the different pieces that are around, about everything that finishes this amazing venue the seating and chill areas the car parts that adorn the displays the cars the music pinball machine we've got the table football we've got a glass table tennis table here which stands out quite a lot as well and then this view a few nice bicycles and things around and this is not even all but this is really something to behold i don't really know what else i can say this is this is mind-blowing. The space, a location, as said, for car enthusiasts. As a car enthusiast, could you ever want to see anything beyond this? I think it's safe to say that this piles on the pressure just a little bit for the Schmuseum. That wonderful full height glass on the mezzanine for the office area, this bright finish to the floor, and of course the cars that are on display here at the space, and even some of the memorabilia, like for example a race suit from Nicky Lauda nonetheless. Anyway, what a fabulous opportunity to be able to come and explore here at the space, as I said, a private venue, invitational only, but today to be here, to be able to see all of the cars, to be able to see some of the other things on display like the Apollo replica here, the prancing horse just over there and to take a full look around. What an awesome, awesome visit to a truly impressive location here. Now back out into the sunshine. That has been, as I said, breathtaking to behold. The Space Dubai have put together something unlike anything else that I have ever seen here in Dubai and I would imagine it's only going to get even better so hopefully we'll be able to see more things here in the future but for today thank you very much for watching I'm going to hop back into the AMG GT Black Series out here in the Middle East thanks to my friends at Quant Fury absolutely awesome do check out the space on Instagram also their YouTube channel the links are down below for those but for today that is all thank you very much for watching as always guys and I'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>